Hello everyone, my name is Mitz, and here we are with Higurashi When They Cry. Never have I ever been so tense to actually start a game, especially a visual novel, no less. And the circles I've been through, mystery and just normal visual novel, like enthusiasts and spinoffs, this has been coming up quite so often, and it's honestly the point of my curiosity is to peaked. This is a long-standing and running like, vision novel series that got its own anime, and literally just trying to go into it, literally just yesterday of me right now going through this, just learning that there's so many installments of, like, literally for Higurashi from, like, chapter 1, which I'm going through right now, to 8, in each chapter is so long. Like, for this one, I believe it's 12 hours hours average and that's not even counting like <sighs> this whole thing and just like even booting this up just learning about the whole thing of them uh half of the Higurashi right here is the question arc and the latter half the last four chapters are answer arcs this series is so long and Lily of I don't know a single thing going into this and just reading through the scene thing it makes it so goddamn on like on om ominous like listen to this the 58th year of showa early summer it's june and the summer heat has arrived earlier than it does most years by day there are crickets and by night there are cicadas we are in hinamimizawa a small village in the countryside there are fewer than 2000 people here but every year there is an event this event is a mysterious death on a certain day in june someone dies and someone else goes missing. The series of deaths connected to the upheaval surrounding the dam construction project, a murder case that was covered up as being reenacted. Is it a conspiracy? A coincidence? Or perhaps a curse? Someone who was supposed to be there isn't. Someone who wasn't supposed to be there is. Someone who was alive last night is dead now, and someone who is here right now isn't alive. So there is no way to avert tragedy. There is no choice but to give up. But don't give up. Only you can stand up to this. God damn it, that's so goddamn ominous. And just listening to this goddamn cicadas like chirping in the background, it just making my nerves stand on end. Oh my lord. This is basically pure psychological horror, and people are saying it's iffy and whether it's actually good mystery if you can actually figure out what's going on, especially in this 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 chapter I'm gonna assume and oh golly gee willikers this is gonna be interesting I heard it's gonna be a very slow going so like we're not probably not gonna get something interesting or intriguing from beginning to here Onakushi opening demon away chapter welcome to the world of Higurashi when they cry the Onikikushi arc will be the opening venue to this world sit back relax enjoy life and in Mazawa to the fullest, the difficulty of chapter is extremely high, but I hope you enjoy the reward. Oh god, I also heard difficulty. How do you do difficulty for just a pure, like, what I see, just pure vision novel, just choices? God, are there, like, god damn, like, complete endings and bad endings and all that? Oh, I heard that too. Oh god, how's this gonna go? I'm playing as a mod for the Steam release of this game, too, of just all that. Gonna see how the voice acting goes. Oh god, what was that text? Oh, it was a loading screen. Oh god. Please do not deploy yourself. Even if the world does not forgive you, I will forgive you. Oh my god. This is a work of fiction and resembles the actual person and organization entirely coincidental. AD 1983, the early summer of the 50th year, the Showen era. It's. Oh, I thought that was someone chopping firewood. Uh. If I was going to be ripped apart anyways, had my body ripped apart would have been far better. I trusted her. Oh god. No, I still trust her. Even this very moment, I trust her. But I'm starting to realize I only want to trust her because I refuse to accept the truth. It was as if I was trying to convince myself in such a silly sobbing voice and those tears those tears making a mess of my face the mechanical repetitious sound finally stilled everything fell silent 
Only the cry of the cicadas remained, annoyingly loud. And yet, I felt as if I could still hear her voice. But that's not possible. She's no longer speaking. The only one crying is me. She never cried. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion because there were none to show. If she had no tears to shed for me, then I shouldn't need to shed any for her. Then why? This pain, my eyes getting moist. Why was this happening? I still wanted to believe I hadn't been split apart. That's enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered gently. My spirit had suffered enough. And countless times I wavered over whether I should just throw the battered thing away. Except, I stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? I'd feel better if I just threw it away. Even knowing that, I chose to believe, didn't I? Only I can understand that painful struggle and appreciate it. Hey, me? I've tried more than enough. I'll acknowledge that much. So, isn't it alright to just take the easy way out? Besides, I'm not throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind. With her, this is a very, very interesting way as a cold opening for her, I guess, the main character's murder, her point of view victim. Like flowers by a grave. Now then, calm your nerves, even though you can't feel your right arm, just lift it up, and with every swing, forget a little more. That kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. Oh god, it's all back again. I liked petting your head. I loved how demure you were. Because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is my first and last banquet for you. Perhaps I really did love you. <laughs> okay, that's an intense opening. Holy shit. Oh my god. That actually is intriguing me to no end. Farewell achievement, okay. God damn it, I feel a bit choked up a tiny bit. Somebody's been apologizing for a while now. I wonder what she's apologizing for. It felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I tried to ignore it. It had been a while since I last went to the city. I didn't return to attend a funeral relative. Even though I lived there until last month, I found the bustle of the city to be overwhelming. Those skyscrapers and the multi-lane roads. The melodious cacophony of the crosswalk. Even the campaign speeches blaring in front of the station felt nostalgic. The place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There's only the chirping of locusts and the babbling of brooks. And the cry of the hikarashi, the evening cicadas. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Wow, they said the word! They said it! Uh. Rather than making me feel lonely, that quietness had begun to instill a sense of serenity. There's nothing where I'm living now. I don't just mean there aren't any burger joints, there aren't even vending machines. I like. I heard that's the biggest thing about Japan, there's like so many vending machines. Like, <laughs> okay, that's how remote this place is. Um, that's not foreboding for anything. Oh boy. No music stores. No restaurants, and no arcades. Man, this place sounds great. An ice cream parlor? No chance. What about a soda parlor? <laughs> the nearest town has some stuff like that, but it's an hour away by bike. But kind of think of it, it wasn't really a big deal. There were music stores and arcades and ice cream parlors where I used to live. It wasn't like I ever hung out any of them. Oh, you're okay. You're a recluse. Okay, like me. Nice. <laughs> I had lived in the city for 10 years, never once been to an ice cream parlor. Oh, that's kind of, that's kind of my net just now, that I'm, uh, I've heard, I've heard some people recommend saying that I'm, uh, the, 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 like, 
just some both reviews and people just saying and re just trying to recommend this game i'm uh it's like they're trying to make the the first part half of the whole story is just making you feel attuned to how the main character thinks and acts and behaves to the point that i'm uh you get too engrossed to how they act and i'm uh even you start i'm uh doubting what even the fuck is happening later on oh my god oh boy that's gonna be true psychological horror oh god I should have gone at least once. It's only now I'm starting to regret that a little. Somebody's still apologizing. Man, you're just lost in your own thoughts while this person is refusing apologizing and apologizing and apologizing and apologizing that you're not listening to them and apologizing even more. Who is she apologizing to? This guy. If she, like, just, if you're becoming like a wallflower right there. She's apologized so much. So just forgive her already. There's no reason anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I started to feel a bit annoyed with whoever was refusing to forgive her. No matter how bad the mistake, there's nothing that can't be forgiven. Even murder? I guess it depends who the victim is and what they what they fucking done have to the, the culprit, I guess, but it's that's still a loaded question. There's still no such thing as an irreparable mistake. I feel like this is gonna get challenged. <laughs> you just need to be more careful next time. Yeah, be more careful in killing someone. <laughs> She's still apologizing, even now. Uh, just gonna megaphone out and just go, ma, shut up already! <laughs> then has she really done anything? To, then has she really done something that can't be fixed? I have no idea what she's done. But if it can't be fixed, then that's all the more reason to forgive her. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change. I guess I, I, I'm that kind of person, I guess, of like, I'm for, too forgiving. Honestly, sometimes, even to the point of, like, I'm, uh, knowing someone, something, something, someone has done something awful, that, or try to rationalize my own head to, like, be forgiving, mm. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change. But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking voice. Like, is she crying by now? Hey, you, the one she's apologizing to right now. Why don't you just go ahead and forgive her? She's apologizing in such a pathetic voice oh we're almost there hold on a second let's see if we can get to english let's see settings let's be listening for english hmm well let's keep it like that and see how it goes keichi we're almost there okay so just purely just a japanese voice acting well let's see how it goes like i'm uh um, uh, if anyone does not like like the voice and just wants to just hear just purely just me ramble instead of like having like you know just voice acting and me like talk then like I might just send that on the comments. Keiichi, you're almost there. Wake up. I was finally roused from my nap by my father's prodding. A little train. Hmm. It seemed the train had reached its final stop. Were you like going from the city to here to move and live? Hmm. We'd spent hours riding everything from the bullet train to local routes. It was hard to believe that the landscape beyond the window and the city I was in half a day ago were in the same country. No, but they were even from the same era. Oh wow. From there, we'd take a car deeper into the mountains. Hmm. Oh wow. Huh. Pass through the dense forest encroaching the mountain road suddenly opened up. Whoa. You know, these are really nice looking, like, just background images and CGs for, like, the setting. Oh, it looks so cozy and peaceful. There, where I live now, Hinamizawa. Hmm. He grunts you in the cry of oh, something experience presents welcome to Hinamiz Hinamizawa. It's very atmospheric, I'll give it that. The visuals like really help a lot. <laughs> Even though we were approaching summer, the morning air still had a frigid bite. Although, in exchange, you could fill your lungs up with crisp, clean air. Flipping open the window, I was greeted with her verdant expanse. Nothing but trees. The neighboring house was far away on the other side, so I was probably the only one enjoying that view and that air. 
this came to mind now. Is it literally like this whole chapter is literally just a uh, the main character like living like moving into here, then like making a friend, like friend with like a with like some girl, and then I'm uh at some point like the end of the chapter, like maybe in the later other chapters, I'm uh literally they die or really the chat like the whole beginning opening was really just the point of view of um uh some random person who dies later on honestly hmm so it's probably the only one enjoying that view in that air i fill my lungs with another deep breath since i started living in hinamazawa i learned that even air had its own taste oh yes i get that feeling <laughs> well okay that's cheerful music but like yeah, if like you're when you're outside in the winter, like it just feels like very heavy, but also almost clean. It's that weird just position. I quickly finished getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. Yeah, according in time, everything happy and cheerful. We just got here. My mother was the only one there. My father was nowhere to be seen. He was probably up working till the early morning. Dad had a rather unconventional job as a painter. It's such a laid back profession. Get up when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I'm so jealous of that easygoing lifestyle. I don't think that's entirely just for me, but like, eh, like, no structure in some cases. Eh, some structure would help work, eh. I even wrote for school that I wanted to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. But just because it looked easy. I never tell him that, though. Ah, uh, the easygoing life. Become a substitute teacher. Just do the most minimal work as possible. <laughs> Mom laid breakfast on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. My mom was such a good cook, it was scary. A perfect, immaculate, ideal breakfast. Like my dad, who didn't even know the meaning of the word schedule, my mom never squandered any time or effort. She hummed a little tune as she brought over the miso soup. It seemed like she was in good mood today. I'm actually feeling even more hungry now. Gosh dang it. Uh, I want to try miso soup one day. <laughs> hmm. I'm so happy you've been waking up early since we moved here, Kaichi. Okay, so Kaichi is the main character. Hmm. If I, if I don't get up early, I don't I don't make it in time for early breakfast. I thought I was being cute, responding with a wise crack and being praised for being good. Full bowl of rice, or will half be enough? Yamamori. Pile it on. First, I savor the steaming hot rice, the seaweed. After that, I covered it with the egg. Between bites of rice, I enjoy the crunch of the pickles. Like, what was it? I heard like this whole entire first half is legit. Pure slice of life. Then it drops <laughs> into insanity. It's probably going to be a long time to get used to that. Between a lot of bites of rice, I enjoy the crunch of the pickles. Ah, uh, the sweet, the wheat, this, the nice, soft, crisp sound of the crunch of the pickles. The last pickle in the fridge. <laughs> Not bad at all. Excellent, as usual. Watching me clean my plate, Mom gave me a warm smile. I'm so happy you've been skipped breakfast ever since we moved here, Kaichi. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right into the last minute before school and rarely ate breakfast. Boycotting the breakfast mom made me each morning. That was probably the only way I could protest being forced to attend cram school. <laughs> okay. I guess that was what you call my rebellious phase. Don't eat dinner, don't eat breakfast, and just go to school and like nothing else. Okay. I wouldn't so much as look at the, uh, the breakfast you woke up early every day to make. If I could go back in time, I'd slap myself. Mindful of time, Mom rushed me along with a wide grin. Isn't that time to meet up with Rena-chan? Hurry, hurry! Mom really seemed to enjoy the fact that her son was going to school with a girl. Oh gosh. Rena is one of my classmates. Oh gosh, Mom is shipping, okay. She really loves looking at her people. Kind of make me every day with a fail. No, probably just like, I'm, uh, you're making friends here. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> but I've seen parents like do that though. She really loves looking at her people, come to meet me every day without fail. The way I looked at it, a guy my age walking to school with a girl was just lame. But well, keeping a classmate waiting for me every day wouldn't be very considerate. Ah, uh, is that young age? Eh. Don't know exactly how old you are, but you definitely seem very young. Seriously though, how long does Rena wait there for me every morning, enough to be worried about you? Taking one last gulp of miso soup, I raced to the door. 
Please thank Rena Chen for the pickles. Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store bought, were they? If I'd known that, I would have saved them a bit more. Morning. Hmm. It's like the, the CGs were pre pre rendering like right before it and then fading it out. Kaichi kun. Good morning. Oh hi. Her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. You're always so early. You should try, you should try sleeping in sometime. If I sleep in, I'll keep you waiting. She's so conscientious. Such a good person. If that ever happens, I'll just leave you behind. Kaichi kun, you're so cold. <laughs> I wait for you all the time. It's only fair. I'll leave you in the dust. Okay then. Wow, Jesus. With that looking back. Okay then. There goes your first friendship. Why are you so mean? Why? Reina had a slightly troubled look in her face. Toying with her was rather fun because of how quickly her mood changed. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'd wait for you. With those words, Rina seemed to relax. How often do you say those exact same things? Her face bl flushed bright red. Uh, thank you. I wait forever until you came, Rina. No matter how long. Uh, f forever? That means it's time for you to stay sick from school tomorrow. Rina turned bright red, seeming rising from her head as her brain short-circuited. She's especially weak to this sort of talk. It's quite rare to find someone this fun to tease. Have you ever read a romance novel, Rena? Are you literally going this route? <laughs> huh? I, I, I haven't. Never read any before. That response, I gather she was interested in them, but was too embarrassed to actually buy one. Ah, I see. I can't imagine what would happen if she did read one. <laughs> She'd probably turn red and pass that. Yeah, first time, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, message from my mom. She says thanks to the pickles. <gasps> oh! It, it was nothing. You're welcome. How were they? Uh, I didn't exactly know they weren't store bought so much. They were just fine, completely mediocre. <laughs> Not too salty? They weren't that salty. Actually, they had a pretty light flavor to them. Uh, I'm so used to pickles, like having like lots of vinegar to them. It's kind of it tastes good at some times. Like I'm a once it just had this entire jar of like complete pure, complete souring like vinegar to the point that almost like my face started just having a drop onto my tongue. Honestly, I think that stayed me off from pickles to this day so far. I should go back to like pickles were good. I remember just having just some, uh, just grabbing one entire, just one dill pickle and just like slowly eating it like throughout the day, honestly. Same thing with just grabbing a boiling cube, like a chicken or beef one that you use for like a, uh, I guess, soup or like, like flavoring for like some meal and just like, just licking it until it just crumbled or until my tongue just was about to go, just go turn, like, go bleeding out just from licking it all day. <laughs> Actually, they have pretty light flavor to them. It would have been just fine to just be honest and say they were good, but apparently it couldn't be that forthright. I think there's a, like maybe an issue with some of the backgrounds going on. And that's probably like something that the background of the house is going through, but let's see though. I'd like to ask something before that. Were you, were you the one who pickled them, Rina? Or was it your mom? Huh? Uh, why do you ask? Where, were they too salty? Her attitude completely changed, she began to panic frantically. The, the pickles should be just right! Was it, was it you, Reina, or was it your mom? Why, why are you making asking who made them? Why? De <laughs> Depending on who made them, my opinion of them might ch of them might change drastically. Huh? Uh, uh, she kind of frantically in her fingers, trying to remember the amount of salt she used to pickle them. <laughs> it wasn't like I was trying to tease her, but I couldn't stop myself. 
guys take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst. Guys like me. Mentally torture yourself right now. Go to bed. Uh, go go to the bed with a sh with your sheets in between your legs and bundle them up into your mouth. <laughs> Rina nervously opened and closed her mouth over and over, trying to muster a response. It, it was me. Delicious. Huh? Pretty good. Mm. Just like the last ones, they went perfectly with the rice. Her face went bright red again. She was completely spacing out. It truly was a lot of fun to tease her. I bet that Rina never gets taken advantage of by some low life. Yeah, you should probably help her with that though. Keep at it, Rina. I'll train you until you handle like a, like the average person. Or so I decide for myself. Let's go. Let's go. If we keep me on waiting, we'll never hear the end of it. Seeing as she just keeps spacing out otherwise, I called Rina back to reality so we make her way to school. This strange, easily fletched girl is Rina Ryugu. Ryugu. I've only known her for about a month, but I've kind of realized it's not just her name that's strange. Oh, her last name? Okay. Technically, is Ryugu her first name? Rina's her la Rina's last name. Okay, why do you- Okay. Okay, I'm actually thinking that that's actually a glitch of like, am I- they- if, like, they- Bring this, the background in, but then fade it out to like a black screen. Okay, let me see if I can do something about that right now. Alright, did a little bit of a fix up, and literally all I really did was just go back to the main menu and reload again, just to be sure. But I also turned off the, the voice acting for this because just sitting there and actually like had to wait for the line to come out and then read actually is kind of a bit annoying on my end. Maybe I'll turn them on when like we get some more intensive sections. Like, eh, let's see how that goes from there. I'll keep it like it is right now. Meet Sean, good morning! Coming up to the next rendezvous point, we saw another person waiting for us. Noticing us, she waved. Hello! Ah, finally! Finally, you two are late! Usually, you're the one who's late. Well, look who's here now. She woke up early, okay? In sharp contrast to the diligent Rena, this one marched to the beat of her own drum. I don't see. Is she in the marching band? She's Mian Sonozaki. For what it's worth, she's our senior and head of the class. Morning, Rina. It's been a while, Kai-chan. Or K actually, it's Kei-chan, actually, thinking about it. But I'm a Kai. I remember reading, like, like have seen the name, like, in, like, in, a, in a fanfic, someone, like, made someone, like, a character's name that. Just K, And I don't know why, but I just feel like off-putting, so I'm uh, Okay, Kei-chan it is. How many years? I was only off two days. <laughs> you don't say. You're such a cute little tyke the last time I saw you. I, f I feel... I'm feeling being teased right now. Mion's gaze stared at my chest, th started at my chest, then dropped straight down, focusing the point to my legs. What? So what you're saying is my crotch was cuter back then. What? Before you ask, just be clear, I've never actually tried to show it to her. Okay. I have grown quite splendidly. Let's just skip over that. You'd be surprised. Not only is he bigger, but he has a little mustache now. But you have a little thing in your face? Okay. Being so engorged with energy every morning is quite a problem, though. I'll introduce you next time, so be sure to greet him properly. Don't say next time. Right now is just fine. I think you need to watch for that next time. How about letting the little guy get a breath of fresh morning air? No. I don't think I ever heard talk... Ever, I don't think I ever heard talk so dirty you could smell it following up the morning air before. I was not expected to, to come back to this with this. <laughs> okay. Mion sure does act like an old man sometimes. Oh gosh, you're the trope of this group. Oh no. Gotcha. Time for the big reveal. Hope you don't regret it. As my hand reached for my fly, Rina began to ramble in a near panic. Hey, hey, what are you talking about? Okay, so there's probably supposed to be here. Please please tell me. It's actually supposed to appear. Let me do a quick thing and just be sure. Hey, okay, like, I don't think it's... Either she's not showing up or anything like that. I'm now worried if this mod is actually a, a bust. Hey, 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 what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Red face and flustered, Rina tried to play dumb, but it was obvious she knew exactly what we were talking about. She seemed like she knows the romance novels already. Okay. How was it? Uh, terrible. Seeing the city again. 
Me on switch gears, dropping the dirty talk and changing the topic to something more befitting the pleasant morning. I only went for the f for a funeral. I didn't have much time. So yeah, did you look for it? That thing I asked for? Oh, like you didn't actually move out, I guess, then, Keichi? Then you just going there for a funeral in the city, that's it? Okay. You're not listening at all. I just came back from a funeral. I didn't have any time to look around in toy stores. Toy stores and hobby shops are completely different, you know? It's really difficult to get Western stuff around here after all. Oh boy. What are you really looking for? Okay, at least that's working. Okay then. Is this about games again, Michan? Mion nods proudly as Rena giggled. Yep, I want a Keichi to bring me back as Westport catalog, you see. Westport. Westport was short for Western Imported Games. Oh, okay. Using that abbreviation didn't make it sound pretty geeky, though. Anime, yeah. I don't know. I really don't know what the, the nerdy, nerdy thing for, like, anime is, technically speaking. Hmm. You can just get them to send you one in the mail, can't you? Postage. Well, I guess I have to now. <sighs> I'm gonna get another game full of hot action. This time, I like a game that's easy to understand. Mion is a board and card game enthusiast, and here she's collected quite a lot of different ones. Oh, she's looking for um, uh, like actual board games. Well, this takes from 1983, so yeah, it makes sense. According to Renon, Mion's room has kind of become a museum for domestic and foreign games. Oh boy. If there's a game you think I understand, let me play it too. <laughs> of course. If Kei-chan is up to it, I should warn you though, we're pretty tough. Just what I want. I play all sorts of games. I don't tend to lose. Whoa. Then we'll let you in the group this time, I guess. I guess. Bristling from joy from head to toe, Rina looked back and forth between me and Mion. Mion gave her a affirmative wink, an expression perked up even further. I thought boys preferred playing outside more, so I figured you wouldn't want to. Rina laughed happily. Oh my. From such a friendly conversation, you wouldn't think I had moved here less than a month ago. Okay, you really did move here a month ago, but stopped to get a funeral. Okay, in the city. Okay. I understood that they did all they could to make a transfer student like me feel at home. I had to try harder to fit in, so they don't feel like they have to try to make me feel welcome. I felt like if I acted a little bit more open than I usually am, it should probably be about right for this place. Well, everyone here is, like, pretty open, actually, then? Hmm. Ah. Hinamazawa was a really small village. Not only was there only one school, but there was only one class. Okay, so the rest- Okay, so the building is so small, you only have one classroom. There's only like 2,000 people here, so like... Like, is this also- like, This is still meant to function both as an elementary, middle school, and a high school? Well, it's only my estimation from like, you know, you know, American point of view. I have no idea how the school system works for Japan. You know, I think literally the vast knowledge I know of them is just um, uh, cram schools. I don't know nothing else. I was actually even still um, trying to wrap my head around um, uh, like uh, how can, like the whole Canadian school system works in Birth Me Code. Like the whole game takes place in Canada. The series does anyway. Just the first year, second years, third years, and it goes all the way up until like high school. Like that was um, interesting to see. <laughs> oh boy. The class encompasses all different grades and ages. There are about 30 students at different levels. They all study in the same class. I'm told that long ago, there used to be a bigger school building and they had actual separate classes. What happened to it? However, it seems nothing happened that made it become a single class and now it stayed that way out of tradition. Huh. You don't even know what it is. Okay, you're, well, you're still here, so I'm learning about it. Hmm. I was shocked at first, but he was a dad pretty quickly. I've already gotten quite used to it. Some of the children playing started right from the morning. Such a lively mood, it felt more like a kindergarten than a proper school. Not that was a bad thing. Like you just take turns intermittently going from, uh, okay class, it's now our turn to study here and all that. Then when our period is done, we'll go outside and do recess while the high schoolers come in. <laughs> eh. Mion, who had been walking in front of us until then, suddenly let me take the lead. Right in front of the classroom door. So it was meant to slide the door open and enter the room first. It is customary, go ahead. <laughs> Too bad, I wasn't gonna fall for that again. Oh, pranks. To think you'd give up the lead here. You meant for this to be a test of my skills. <laughs> you be testing my I am, uh, reflexes. Mion chuckled with a hidey smirk of her face. Okay. 
quite a change of mood. What is it, you guys? Step, step back, Rena. It's dangerous. She's here. Huh? Then, Satoko, Satoko Chan is. Oh my gosh! I actually think. Oh god, the, the sprites aren't meant to be there. Oh no. Her name was Satoko Hoju. She was a dis disrespectful, impudent, bossy kid. The way she talks is annoying, but it would be immature to get worked up over just that. The real problem was this. Quite the obvious trap. A blackboard eraser wedged in the door. It's too obvious. Satoko! A haughty laugh came from beyond the door. Mion, you were setting it up. Excellent, Kei-chan. I guess that means you win this round. Okay, black backgrounds. Oh, boy. Now, this is Satoko we're talking about. I doubt this is it. After falling for such an intricate trap since the day I transferred, I know I'm going to let my guard down. That means a chalkboard eraser is right there in the door. It is going to fall on you. That means a second prank the second you walk into the door. Then a third one. Then a fourth that never ends until you get out of the school and actually go back home. But then she actually managed to break into your home and set a trap there in your own room and wrap with your things and made you just make a whole home alone and try to kick you in the nards. <laughs> Satoko liked to combine a variety of traps. Traps that were like simply there to bait you into their main one. Traps that relentlessly kept coming at you like a sadistic Rube Goldberg machine. The list goes on. As well as being clever, they almost never miss fire. Oh boy. When you least expect it, she strikes. No escape. No time to relax. By the looks of it, this eraser is normal. No rocks or anything in it. Rocks? What? Oh, it's like have like far up in the door. Okay, I took a pretty, I took a pretty heavy hit from a blackboard eraser low with rocks my first day. What kind of ra blackboard eraser can you fill with rocks? So then, why did you go just open the door and let drop? That's what it is. That's what S Satoko was after, making me focus my attention upward. So I lifted my hand to the door. Oh boy, there are thumbtacks stuck to the sliding door handle with tape. A frightening trap. Okay, so let's. I'm honestly confused now if like, if like the mod is like it's at fault here, or am I? Uh, it's just literally how I'm. Uh, the, the story is actually progressing now. I'm really confused at how all the visuals are going. Oh boy, a potent, terrifying trap indeed. Concealed by using the blackboard eraser, an impressive combination, Satoko. But in the end, nothing more than the trivial machinations of a child. Assured of my victory, I threw the door open and stepped into the room, then to immediately fall into a pit of spikes and die immediately. I felt something strange to my ankle. It was similar to the sensation of a jump rope catching my leg. Oh my gosh. Tripwire. Oh my god. By the time I realized she had me, hook, line, sinker, I was already too late. I began to fall in an almost picturesque manner. Kei-chan, watch out! Incentively re reacting to Mion's shrill warning, it's my body midair before I land on the floor. Oh my. Ow, 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 ow! An inkstone filled to the brim was placed right where I would have landed. An inkstone? I shuddered. Imagine the situation had I land, landed square on it. Oh my god. Oh, let's see. My, my, what do we have here? Just gonna have you have the most mysterious voice. Literally, I don't have any, like, I don't have a lot of unique voices for girls, honestly. I just have enough for, like, males so much. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> a fair morning to you, Keichi-chan. Keichi-san. Aren't we fly if you won this morning? Look, I dodged three of your traps. Don't worry about it. Okay. Still sprawled in an awkward position, I was greeted by a mocking voice. That was a step up from your usual trap, Satoko. I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. You're quite lucky this morning. Oh my. You little- Ow, 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 ow. You seem like I inadvertently sprained my back a little when I landed. Well, doctors for that. <laughs> they, they amputate. Better than landing on that ink stone. Still no idea what that is. <laughs> a small hand gently rubbed my head. Pain, pain, go away. A small, dainty hand continued to gently shook my head. You didn't sprain your back or anything, did you? No, definitely not. If you rub like this, the pain disappears. I thought about asking how rubbing my head would help my back, but I didn't. It's not so much about what you actually do, it's the thought that counts. Wait. The head pads thing is a small data from the opening. 
is she the one actually is gonna die we're actually going from her it was her perspective does that mean she's dead yeah thanks rika chan the pain's going away now oh my god no it actually is the mod's fault oh my god oh boy this is gonna be i have to figure this out in the next episode then yay rika chan good morning good morning to you reina good morning to all rika chan greeted each of us with an adorable little bow it was infectious. Rena, me, and I am all bowed back. Yeah, that was this, some of it's weird. Okay, you're such a good kid, Rika-chan. So much better than Satoko. I glared over in her direction. Satoko was whistling while rather deliberately trying to avoid eye contact. Ah, the machinations of a normal childhood day. I'm the very model of a good girl. A girl, girl wouldn't set those nasty traps. No, that's what everyone does. <laughs> Nothing but lies and slander. Because they would prove. Ah! I picked up Satoko by the back of her collar. She looks like a misbehaved cat when I do this. She starts waving, just clawing at you know. But a cat wouldn't be setting traps. You don't have met a lot of cats then. <laughs> no. She's much harder to deal with. I M S O R R Y. Try saying that. If you won't say it. I cocked my index finger on my thumb, letting it tremble as I brought it closer to Satoko's forehead. I I'm against violence! You don't have any proof! Just so you know, my forehead flick really hurts. It can split plywood right in half. Ah! Stop, get away from me, you beast! Don't say in the way people misunderstand. Oh, don't worry. A small hand tugged in the back of my shirt. As the teacher. Oh, no. She's been lonely since you were gone for two days. Mika Chan really is just so okay. Sprites are weird, okay. How can I do anything more than after being told that after that being told that? I gently released my grip on Satoko, who at this point was on the verge of tears. She still had her eyes clamped shut as she braced herself for the forehead flick. No, okay, that's weird though. Ah! <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Ah! You mustn't cry, Satoko. Keep on fighting. Yeah. Mika gently petted the head of her prankster friend. You never guess these two are the same age. Oh my. I think Satoko could learn a thing or, thing or a million from Mika-chan. Next time, it's an even more amazing trap. Uh, get rid of the last thought. Wait a minute. <laughs> as she observed the scene, Rena's expression grew with static as she began to swoon. Ah, oh, Sadako is crying. Sadako Chan is crying. So kutu. So kute. <laughs> you can't take them home. Oh my. Uh, but they're they're so cute. Oh. Oh, they're so cute. Okay. You can't, no matter how cute they are. But just for a bit is fine. Kidnap them. Kidnap them both. It's fine. Rina kept a cutesy face, even as outrageous ideas spewed from her mouth. Turn to Mion, Rina is ridiculously weak to cute things and always tries to take them home. Object or person. Stealing is bad, but abducting people is even worse. Give it up. Then I can just look. Just looking. Looking is not fine. That should be fine, right? Right? Rina swooned over Sadako's crying form. Just like, just lives out the pain of others, okay. If a girl ever goes missing in Hinomizawa, we'll be forced to turn Rina into the authorities. W where does this come from? Forgive me, Rina. Oh, that whole kid kind of thing. Okay, I'll be sure to bring you care packages when they put you away. <laughs> the teacher's coming. Quickly, clean everything up. Satoko, the ink, the ink stone is yours, right? Just for me on a single statement, the entire mood of the room shifted back to normal. I see. The ink stone was bad, but the thumbtacks like the door handle were an even bigger problem. Why would the clean up after her mess? Uh. I pull the tape off carefully, making sure not to skewer myself and get to go to the hospital stitches. Even though Satoko was the one who set it up, every everyone had to pick up after her. Yeah. By the time the teacher entered the room, the bed limb from before had been neatly tied up, like it never happened at all. We can clean up any mess. Not foreshadowing for high dead bodies. <laughs> ah, we made it in time. 
Rise! Attention! Mion gave out the morning commands. I'm assuming like those, like, you know, this whole group is a lot of the ones in the class. Oh, there's more. They're not, they're not important enough. <laughs> it's difficult being a teacher for all these different grades in one classroom. She has to teach something different to each one, but naturally she ends up spending all her time with the younger kids. Rina and Mion, being the highest grade in the class, end up mostly doing self-study. Oh, okay, so they're all in one single class, but trying to teach everything all at once between all these people. And then those kids, okay. Rina and Mion, being the highest class in the grade, end up mostly doing self-study. They even end up helping teach their kids, so it seems like they can never get to their own studies. They're actually way behind where my studies have progressed to. Hmm. As a result, I'm pretty much taking over for the teacher and helping Rina and Mion with their studies. <laughs> You're higher in grades, nice. You're a pretty good teacher, Keichi-kun. Or Keichi-kun, eh. My mouth, eh. Easy to understand. You, you like saying that, that phrase a lot, easy to understand. Hmm. It's a form of compliment, hmm. Rina took a bre breath, a breather after finishing highlighting an important section. Teaching is making me lose confidence. It makes me aware of how shallow my understanding of the subject is. Don't beat yourself out like that. They say that to teach someone something, you need to understand it backwards and forwards. Maybe. Depends. Or you just sh share the surface level. So while you're teaching us, you're getting in your own practice. In contrast, this person over here is quite less far about things. For one, she isn't she supposed to be in a higher grade than me? Look, Mion, this is for your own good. If you don't take this seriously, there will be trouble later on. With these marks? I mean, look at all these good, high-marking grades on my report card that you don't have. Pat, pat. <laughs> With these marks. It's not like I'm aiming to go on to a prestigious school. I'll be fine as long as I pick up what I need to know for certain entrance exams a little at a time. Her staunch defiance is really something else. This is a different type of relax than someone who already knew what was going on to be the entrance exams. Me, Sean, Kaichi-kun is doing his best to teach us. You need to try hard, too. You're just a good and honest kid, Rena. Pat her head right now. Do the foreshadowing. Do the badness. <laughs> I'll make sure you guys get accepted into a good school. Make sure that you die at the end. <laughs> well, uh, thanks so much. Especially you, Rena. Private lessons? Just the two of us. P private l lessons? A puff of smoke shaped like a halo popped out of Rena's head. You're now going to be a complete angel, hopefully, then? Exactly what kind of private lesson is she fantasizing about that's making her turn so red? Oh. Oh, God. I'd like to hear the play-by-play -play of that next time. Oh, my. While well, Mion was flipping through her vocabulary flashcard, she threw out a casual question. So in the city, do you have to study this much? If you don't know at least this much, you can't get into university. So you study just to get into a university? Well, yeah, basically. Well, knowing that this stuff won't ever come in handy in the future. Well, I hear you can get into university as long as your attendance is good enough. R really? Study equals entrance exam. Time the basic law of the universe so easily overturns and me into a state of shock. It's the weirdest thing imaginable. That is right. Just a uh, buy your way through the school. <laughs> there aren't really enough people right here to warrant weeding them out with an exam. If anyone can get into university, then there's no need to be all uptight about this stuff, right? Well, that's true, but you should at least know stuff that's common knowledge. Exactly. That's how Geezer thinks that, instead of wasting time studying pointlessly. You should be spending your precious teen years doing something, doing more meaningful things. It was too profound of a statement to simply laugh off. But since it was me on, it probably didn't have exactly how to do the meeting. No, oh my god. School bell! It's time to leave! We gotta skate now! In a place with chime, the sound of the principal waving a hand bell drifted through the classroom. Okay, chime, we're done! We're done! It's our wonderful lunch time! Okay, it's the only lunch. We're still stuck here. We're, f we're frozen in time here. In a complete 180 from our unmotivated state, Mian gave the commands that signaled the end of the morning period. Kaichi kun, let's have lunch! I might have been making a very trouble face. Rina smiled brightly at me. All right, let's eat. There seem to be different clicks. 
even within the class. Nice. So these are the shy kids. These are the rambunctious kids. And uh, these are them. Uh, who even talks to those people, club? Let's go over there. <laughs> Most of them were divided up by gender and age, but our group was different. Our ages were different, and we both had both girls and boys. Or it's just mostly girls, just you. <laughs> we weren't reserved around each other. This level of openness makes a transfer student like me pretty happy. Rina and Mion pushed their desks together so they were facing each other. At the same time, Sutako and Rika Chan were slowly lugging their desk over as well. Why are you on like, I guess like just purely just like no honorific basics with Sutako? I'm actually kind of curious. Hmm. Keiji Kun, hurry, hurry! Rina waved her chopstick in an unrefined manner, trying to hurry me along. Faster, faster, trip, trip. Unless everyone was together, they wouldn't even open their lunch boxes. Kaiji san's lunchbox is mostly surely a plain, miserable rice and seaweed. Why'd you just show it to us? Come now! You know Sadako was hurling insults at me. She still wouldn't open the lid to her own lunchbox till I was there. Politeness. Nice. I put on my lunchbox swiftly and dragged my chair over to join the circle. Hey, sorry to keep you waiting. Well then, Representative Me, uh, please give the signal to start. At first, this was kind of embarrassing, but I got used to it pretty fast. At this point, I probably wouldn't even open my own lunchbox if someone else was too slow. Our ages and genders may have all been different, but we are all friends. Hmm. Come on, give a rousing speech, Mion. Let's eat! The sound of our little five-part chorus echoed beautifully throughout the classroom. Oh my. Really, though, I've gotten pretty used to this group made of all girls. Okay, this is... There's something wrong with this mod. Definitely so. Oh boy. Of course, there are other boys in the class, but they're all even really younger, so they were scared to approach me. Well, that's to be expected. Every boy just see older boys as scaly. Compared to the girls, well, at least these girls aren't picky. We put all the side dishes in the middle where everybody was free to pick at them. I thought girls would mind sharing a meal with a guy, so I was a little bit foster joining in. However, Mia noticed that and teased me quite a bit. At the fruit of my Efforts? I can now reach over and take sides from anybody's lunch. My, my, isn't Sir Keiichi's lunch extravagant today? My, my, isn't Madame Sadako's lunch extravagant as well? The stewed stuff has a nice look to it, rather trendy. Buying into the fight that Sadako was starting, our chopsticks locked in a cross counter, stabbing each other's lunch. Mmm, my, how delicious! Oh, this taro is good, actually. The stewed stuff is good too, even cold! To see my happy face, Rika Chan's expression broke into a little smile. I saved some from dinner last night. By the way, Sadako and Rika Chan's lunches were always the same. It seems that Rika Chan makes it, makes it for both of them every day. Rika Chan made this too? Aw. Oh, that's, that's actually Kaishi, sorry. Rika Chan made this, made this too? These taste like my mom's home cooking. I was honestly impressed. That means we have competition for the family. <sighs> When you get rid of them. The carrot rosettes were from a mold. They were done by hand with a knife. That's not easy to do. I guess Rika Chan's like just good at this sort of thing. She's really good at sewing, laundry, and stuff like that. Amazing, right? Amazing! Rika is quite exceptional in many ways. Oh ho ho ho! That's nothing for you to boast about. Rina's actually better cooking than I am. Huh? Uh, well, you know. Star. It seemed that the topic conversation switched to Rena when she wasn't expecting it, making her blush and trip over her words. Rena's lunch really was the star of the table. Look, good cooking requires duty, responsibility, detail orientation, and just complete superiority of the rest of the table. I will make the best lunch and defeat you all at this game. <laughs> Not only did it look good, it tasted good. Everyone else pulled from Rena's lunchbox constantly. Like, I'm just waiting for one day to some, uh, Hey, Rena, what's over there? Over there? Because the lunchbox is mine. <laughs> Everyone liked this one so much before, so I made a lot this time. It's good. I help? I help? It's got high marks for me. Oh, Mion, you're taking too much. Knocking Mion's chopstick aside, I reached out, trying to secure my own portion. Sadako and Rika-chan reached over at the same time, and the struggle ensued. Everyone shoveled in mouthful after mouthful while praising it, and Rena's lunch box was soon empty. It's kind of bad that no one thought to leave any for Rena. But Rena seemed rather satisfied as she looked on. 
Mm. Yeah, I think there's a whole seat here right there, but I couldn't quite see it. I got a glimpse of it, but it's right there anyway. So how'd you like it? Isn't Rina-san an extremely good cut too? Quite different from Kaichi-san. Kaichi I said there's nothing for you to boast about. You're not much different from Case, like from Case, John Sotoko. Can you tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower yet? Honestly, I don't either. So I'm uh, no, don't worry about Sotoko. I I can't think of the top of my head either. Is cauliflower like that yellow thing actually? Not yellow, um, uh, white. Literally just, it's literally just broccoli is just green, but cauliflower is just pure white. Hold on, I need to do research now. I am too enthralled. Cauliflower. Yeah, it's it's just white. Okay. How, okay. <laughs> Honestly, okay. <laughs> Sadako's face went pale. Hey, hey, you might can tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower, you know? Of course I can't. I really can. It's really hard for her to lie. Oh my gosh. Mm. Even a second, actually. I'm actually getting quite annoyed about this a bit. I did a simple fix of literally just starting the game up again, and like literally, I think it's actually fixed all the problems. I probably should have done it in the first place, but I'm uh, oh boy, I'm stupid. But this is also the scene just happening when they're all talking together and like stealing from each other's lunch without permission. Oh, the the sin, the crime. That's actually a really nice C CG though. It's really sweet actually. Okay, but going back to the what's happening now. Kaichi Kun both taste good when they're boiled on top with mayo, right? The cauliflower debate. You shouldn't be picking on her. Uh, Michon, too. Rina hurriedly tried to follow up, but Mion laughed hard haughtily as she drew closer to Satoko. Yes, get her! Get her! Get her! Well, well, just pretend it's a little home ec lesson. Now then, Satoko, what's this? Mi lifted up her chopsticks. Between them was a piece of green stuff wrapped in bacon. That's bacon. But that's a spare. Mm. Mia made eye contact with me, and within 0.3 seconds, I had Rika's trans mouth covered. Putting a piece of bacon wrapped in spare, guessing giving her two choices. She's pretty terrible. <laughs> uh, well, uh. The yellow one is cauliflower. No, wait, the green one is cauliflower. So which? Hmm? Torture her. Torture her. Probably the yellow one is broccoli and the blue one is cauliflower. Wait, what? Don't don't do a me mistake. But the green one is uh, um. Do you really know which is which? How about you just give up? I'd expect no less from the class representative, the oldest. The way she drives people into a corner just shows how much experience she has. That's just a hunch, but being brought into this Sonozaki household must be quite the ordeal. I do know. I really do. Answer the question. I know. I know. Uh, ah! <laughs> just breaks down. Okay. She finally broke down and started crying. When she acts like this, she actually starts to seem her age. Hmm. Oh my god, don't kidnap. Okay, please. Ah, oh, cute. Rina entered a state of euphoria as Sadako bawled her eyes out. Every time this happens, I'ma uh, just push Rena out of the door, okay, casually. Rena was in a state of bliss and she rubbed her cheek against Sadako's head and smothered her. Really a very content face. Well, that wouldn't care if the world ended right then. As I kind of smile, I see. Rena, Rena, Mimi's picking on me! Ah! Cute, cute! It's okay, Rena. Onichan will take care of all those bad people who tease my little sister. Oh, you're actually siblings? Er. <laughs> what? Oh my god. This is fish poof bam. <laughs> it's like a flash of lightning. What was that just now? Don't worry about it. Like, we're not. This is the wrong genre for that. You don't have to think about it anymore. We're not in Shonen. Or an action manga. <laughs> Both of Rena's fish shot out at supersonic speed, striking me on and me squarely in our faces. Before we knew it, me and I were sprawled, spread eagle on the floor, staring up at the ceiling with matching welts in our faces. Nice. This is the first time you've gotten one, right? Today, she went easy on us. Easy? You mean something harder than this? With that, me and I both slumped our heads back to the floor in unison. Uh, the next step was like kidnapping and um, our torture. 
I probably should have realized it by now. From now on, I'll be careful when I'm within striking distance of Rena. This means just to wear I'm a complete just pillow armor whenever you go to school. <laughs> See, Sadako Chana took care of them. Hmm, cute. How'd I take you home? I, 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 boy. Making sure Rena couldn't see it. Sadako stuck her tongue out at us. I hate you. Damn it all, using Rena like a puppet. We could try and massage her bruises with her without saying a word. At least we got one sympathizer. No, we're back to school now. Eh, I don't wanna. Okay, no, he escaped. Okay, good. <laughs> no matter what the day had held, the last school bell always came too soon. Our shadows stretched off into the distance. Hey, Kaichi-kun, tomorrow, do you have plans or anything? Or anything? I thought we were, like, you know, well, Kaichi was just, like, planning to do the whole private tutoring with you, so... Eh... Huh? Such a direct question for Rina, I inadvertently blushed. If it was for a date, then wouldn't you do it more subtly? Rina suddenly lost her words and realized that I misunderstood and turned red as well. Oh, uh, um, no, no, I didn't mean like that. You see... So apparently that wasn't what she meant. But since it's always fun with Rina's of panic, I went along with it a little. Oh, uh, really? So it wasn't meant that way? Huh? Huh? Playing it up, I slumped my shoulders, feigning dejection. Uh, Kaichi, Kaichi, kind of, why are you so disappointed? Why? Why? Michan, I need help! <laughs> Unable to hold it any longer, Mian slapped me in the back. I see, this old geezer never knew you could push her buttons like that. <laughs> huh? What? What? What is it? Mian was rolling the floor, clutching her stomach while Rena flailed around, completely bewildered. I couldn't help but start laughing as well, feeling just a bit guilty. I ruffled Rena's hair. I'm kidding. Sorry. It was a joke. That was my fault. She really is a cute one. Ha! Huh, a, a joke? Since when? Since when? Since I got here. <laughs> uh, about halfway through. Halfway? So, Keishan, that means you weren't acting when you blushed at the start. Huh? That, that means... It was only a momentary lapse, but there was no way Mion would let such a de delectable detail slip, back, slip by her. Oh, I see. Okay, this is just setting up a mother to them have maybe so they're crushing each other, and now it's between them to die. Okay, always do that. Uh, well, you see. Saying anything more also was also a bad idea. My bullet state, I slipped further into an unfavorable position. Technical advantages and disadvantages are going well. She's working this this to her advantage now. After that, Mian continued to tease me about it for a while. And you never recovered for it ever again. They had to move out of the town. So why were you asking me if I'm free tomorrow, Arena? Huh? Oh, what were we talking about? You were the one who brought it up, okay. It had been so long that Rena had forgotten. That's how that's how long Mian teased me. Oh my gosh. It's been hours. It's just Keichan. You probably can't find your way around Mina Mizawa by yourself yet, yeah, can you? That was true. I hate to say, it, if you blindfold me and spun me around three times like we're playing Pinnet and the Donkey, I wouldn't be able to tell up from down here. Yeah, I don't think I know how to get anywhere besides a back and forth from school. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so you see, tomorrow we were thinking about me, Sean, and I could escort you through Hina Mizawa and show you around. That would be a good a godsend. Frankly, I was happy with the author, the offer. You come a chorus, right? If I'm free, as a bird. You're being invited by a girl, you know. If I'm free, look, let, let the man have a time to like do do his own thing, okay? You're probably free anyways. Well, that's it's, it's apparent, like give chores. I don't know. If I'm free, that's right. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. I was being stubborn so as not to give her a clear yes or no. Even though I thought it was a godsend, I'm too much of a scamp to say so up front. Keiichi kun, you're not free, perhaps? Perhaps? The torture method, emotional. emotionally manipulate him and say yes. While me and I had our rather sour back and forth, Rina picked over at me hesitantly. 
Figuring it had been a bit too rough on her, just gave in. <sighs> Sorry, forgive me, I apologize. I'm free. Great! She huge, that's what she's expecting. The trepidation disappeared from Rena's face and blossomed to a smile. Hey now, hey now! Seems like there's quite a difference between how cold you are to me compared to Rena, isn't there? Uh, yeah. Crush. It seems Mion didn't care for how rude I was to her compared to how quickly I agree with Rena. But her being annoyed was very interesting. So push Rena forward, speeding up her pace to leave Mion behind. Let's go, Rena. Maybe it should be just the two of us tomorrow. Leave grumpy old Mion behind. Huh, whoa, if Kaiji Kun is okay with that, then... I'm the one who came with the idea to take him around. Don't ignore me, Kaichi Maibera. It'd be great if the two of us could go on a picnic together. Should we bring a basket, Rina? If we bring a basket, I'll make the food. Maybe. Maybe! Don't you ignore me too, Rina. I'll put out a village-wide circular circular so that you two disappear into the hotel district together. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, uh, well, there you go. Our main lead is dead. Well then, I'm going home right away, right now, to start making it. Tomorrow's gonna be so fun. Later, Keiji Gun, Michan. Bye. And so she goes. Rena bounded off like she was walking on the moon. As the dust settled, all that was left was me sitting next to Mion, sprawled on the ground. There was a welt on my face. There was a welt on that welt. Are you all right? I think you should be like she, like someone else should be asking that to you, honestly. There's over two mirrors between you guys. <laughs> Since you came, they've become sharper. This old geese's body can't handle it. What? Maybe it'd be easier to stop saying stuff that makes Rena want to hit you. Or else this will end up being me on slapstick comedy hour. If that happened, the results might be fatal. Hey, don't feel bad, Mion. You're probably the only one who can dodge her jabs. I feel like it was her knee, though. Oh, she attacked you, actually, instead. Could it be that we're hanging around with an unrivaled martial arts master? Most likely. Maybe someday we'll see her debut in extreme contact sport. We can't lose to Rena. You need to train up and have a rematch. Okay, okay, Sean, you should. You should. It's old geezer will work for you. Me and I refer our determination to discover a way to counter Rena's infallible technique. Pillows. Lots and lots of pillows. Okay? Pillows never fail. Until they do. And they break and you choke in the feathers and die from it. Hmm. Oh. I guess that's like one segment done then, I guess? Huh. Hmm. Oh, new tips unlocked. Tips acquired. We're a mixed grade. We don't have a uniform. Wait, what? I'm actually kind of curious where we leave this off. What does that mean? We're a mixed grade. Wait. Yeah, this is going to be that kind of game. If, like, the main menu and this, like, tips menu is, like, this ominous in terms of a mod. Listen to the ominous change in the background. The drum beat. We're a mixed grade. Is it really just. It's, oh, is it really just an entire scene, actually? The same age. Yes, that's right. The same zodiac animal, too. Hey, now, it would be weird if we were the same age, but not the same zodiac animal. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's not true. If your birthday isn't the same, then you can have different animals even the same age. I mean, yeah, we're just going to lessen the zodiac animals then. Huh? Oh, I see. Mion, you're pretty smart. If we don't have the same birthday, then we can't have the same animal. We can't. It's just a thing. We can't date if we don't have the exact same animal or are compatible. Mm. This reminds me of that joke of like, there's some, uh, oh, I'm an astrophysicist. Like, it's a, no, it's a reality show. It's like, well, I'm an astrophysicist. Really? Well, I'm a Gemini. I have no idea what happened to that girl on the Bachelorette show. God. <laughs> what month were you born, by the way, Kaichi Kun? Kaichi Kun. I, I'm never going to go over that distinction, am I? Never. Keishi. Ugh. I'm July. Rina smirked and popped up with pride. Hey now, what's the meaning of this? She's not planning to be a high and mighty of her birthdays a wee bit sooner than mine, is she? <laughs> Don't even. It's impossible to challenge me by birthday. I wouldn't even mind you if you bet a dollar per month. 
When? Huh? Huh? Why? Why? Marina panicked as it's suddenly being challenged to a wager. Look at how panicked she is. I'm certain she doesn't have much allowance left this month. Steal it from her. Like, it should be just enough to get the money back to make it worth being punched in the face every time. Just steal all her money so she can't use it for her own free time. It should be just right. It's just sending her into a panic about something as simple as a birthday is so fun, I can't help myself. So that means you were born in April, Kei-chan. Right on. Too bad, Rena. I'm already full, far older than Rena. Oh, I see. Then you're the same age as Michan. Oh. Well, just a few months. The gap will open again soon enough. Mian stuck her through her nose. Hey, now that's nothing to get all high and mighty about. So if I'm going to talk, beginning parentheses, heh, <laughs> end parentheses. Now that you mention it, you're in a higher grade, right, Mion? So let's leave the whole tip section is really just a, a small snippet of just like like old conversation they had, not actually progressing the story. Okay then. Um, hmm. If you're an upperclassman, then it can be an underclassman from now on. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's a good joke. Me, Chang, you're not making any sense to me. You'll find out when you're older, or you read the, the first book, okay? You need by. Just by seeing Rena's blushing face, you can tell she knew exactly what she meant by it, though. No, like, don't worry. When she's blushing, that just means she's completely, completely innocent, has no idea what's going on. Don't worry about it. Just Or just force the innocence out of, out of her just by giving her a book for her birthday. Just some random book. Then Sadako and Rika-chan are underclassmen. Their grade is so different that they should be in different schools, shouldn't they? Keiji-kun, your tastes are a bit too young, I think. I think. I think. Uh, you're not making any sense yourself, Rina. I, at this point, I don't even know what's going on, how you're talking about that. I'll just grab onto her head and scruff it up a bit. Stop! Okay. This is just, okay. I wonder about before, but yeah. I was wondering why the school was a different, as different school years all mixed up. Oh, it's also where I'm, uh, all the, the hours come in. It's just um, uh, this tip section. It goes on for a while, a while. I was wondering about it before, yeah. I was wondering why the school was different school years all mixed up together. It actually be, like, fun to know. I actually figure out a tiny bit if it's that important, maybe. There aren't enough classrooms. Can't help it. This building is being rented from the forestry services, after all. Oh. Huh. If it's just like that, it makes sense. I thought our school was strange for a while now. Wait, so this is rented by the forestry service? Like, so it's literally this whole place was like, like, I'm, uh, before, like, the town's built on here, like, a protected area. And then literally, I'm, uh, the town's built over top of it, and I'm, uh, they just had to pay your rent to the forestry service to have, have a built-up school. Based on tradition, like, everyone just comes here. Yeah, hmm. Well, they had, like, more classrooms than they mentioned before before it went down to one. Just because they got a new... Just rented out from the forestry service and just went to one classroom now. Hmm. Huh. The schoolyard is gravel. There are rooms that aren't for classes, and there's some strange sort of construction machinery part here. It's always going to be there. Don't worry about it. Construction takes months and goes into years without you even realizing it. Soon... You just think, you just see those yellow machines just moving things that have, just moving one pile of dirt to the next, and the pile just never seems to grow bigger or smaller no matter what. It just stays there, yearning to be let go, to be thrust off into the woods, just lost as a goddamn machine ghost. Literally, like, it just feels like construction goes on for way too long. <laughs> Even though I know they have to do, like, maintenance checks and to make sure everything is a code, but, like, just still so feels like they'll never leave. They never leave. Why is it being borrowed? What happened to the real school? This is the fake school. There was one here forever before the war. It got dilapidated. Hmm. They closed it down. It probably was a great, grand old schoolhouse. Hmm. Well, because of that, the students would have to attend a school in the city. That's pretty far, though, you know? Hmm. Oh, so, like, um, uh, that schoolhouse was destroyed in the war, I guess? They decided to take this over? Okay. Which school would that be? Did you know there's a school if you pass by the Okinomiya train station, turn to the hospital, head towards the pediatrics department? There's a sc 
school at the hospital to head towards the pediatrics department. Like, there's a school inside the hospital? Or... Oh, it's like by the pediatric section of the hospital. Like, it's right next to the building. Okay. Wh what? That's so far. I couldn't tell where that was by the location, but I understood it was pretty far from his reaction. Ah, uh, context clues. Well, that's why. The guys that didn't want to commute to Okinomiya rented out of the building from the forestry services and are attending the pseudo schoolhouse here. Hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. About half the children in Hinomizawa go here. There are quite a lot of kids that come here on bike. Nice. Well, since they're attending this really messed up school, it might be pretty hard for them to get into higher education. That's not true, Michan. If you stay properly, you can go anywhere you want. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I totally agree with Rina on this one. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Let's try our best. All of you, try your best. This old man will be rooting for you. Not just us, to you too. You should be preparing for exams, shouldn't you? Your future is bleak with grades like this. Fine, just fine. If I get stuck, then I'll just mooch off Keichan as he works forever. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Well, what do you mean by mooch off Keichan? What do you mean? Uh, don't worry about it. Um, uh... Hey! You're too loud. Be quiet during self-study. The teacher yelled at all three of us. Oh, that's the teacher. Okay, I'm, uh... Okay. It's completely our fault. No, it's never your fault. It's always the teacher's fault. Sadako saw and short of haughtily. I still got my tongue and I heard no response. It is just as Mion says. The school has nothing to do with higher education. But it makes up for that by having lots of valuable things that other schools don't. Would you classify that? Like, literally just talking to their students and all that? Oh. It's literally just, like, I guess, learning, like, small, I guess, anecdotes. Like, them at a school beforehand, huh? Since, like, more comes up, we don't have a uniform. It seems like you kind of do, like, well, silly uniforms. Are you kind of just wearing a slightly different one than them? So, like, I definitely need to get more used to, like, I guess, ages and all like that. Like, just to get a grasp on everyone. Like, literally, I'm, uh, I'm, since I'm dealing with a culture, I don't even, like, I haven't seen a lot of anime that, does, like, does with, you know, high school or, like, even, like, a normal school setting. So, like, I'm completely lost in the dark. Most of the stuff I watch, like, like, you know, high fantasy or just stuff like that. Like, more just fantastical stuff. Or sci-fi, anything like that. It's nothing as, you know, grand as this or anything. Well, it's not grand, it's more like Slice of Life. I haven't seen a lot of Slice of Life, like, anime and all that. The closest to the thing I've read of any Slice of Life is just some, uh, like, American, like, just American Slice of Life stuff. Any of like that, but it's very sparse. But it's, eh, I'll try to figure out as we go along, though. I'll check, maybe I'll check it out on my own time. Don't know if we have to do all that, but I'll save and load right there. Noise. There you go. End of chapter one. That was the end. Wait, chapter one of chapter one? Okay. Hold on. Tell, wait. <laughs> wait, are you telling me chapter one of chapter one is like that was chapter one of chapter one? Wow, we. <laughs> Gosh dang it. But it'd be a good time to leave us off here. Just get a good, um, uh, I guess, taste of what I'm thinking like, the game's going to be out. It's probably going to be quite a while before anything, like, I guess, big or drastic comes along. But it's more like setting things up entirely. And, like, if anyone, like, wants to, like, read to the tip section, like, I, I can go about doing that. And, like, I'll be my mind situated, something like that. Just make sure I get my head right on, because that seems like the whole point of these early six is, is just, um, uh, screwing your mindset into be into the main character of Keichi. And just, um, uh, then when the metamor metamorphosis is complete, then, um, uh, trauma, psychological horror. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Oh man, golly gee willikers, oh man. Uh, but I guess we'll see like what else happens or just whatever it's like more such a life stuff happens until we get a horror. Even if like maybe we'll probably get like small subtle bits of like I guess very small like psychological horror, just like very subtle details of it, or setting up or foreshadowing it, maybe as we go along. But I guess we'll figure out as it comes to it. And with that, I think it'd be a good time to leave us off right here. So, what a fun time watching as I am playing this. Hope you see me next time, what time may be. And I all hope a fantastic day.